What is the best material to make a mountain bike frame from? Carbon is arguably the lightest, aluminium or steel the most affordable, but what about titanium? For some, nothing beats the crisp, springy ride feel of titanium. So just for all you TI fans out there, here's five titanium bikes we think should be on your wish list for 2024. Revel bikes are better known for their carbon full suspension rigs, but the recently launched Terraid hardtail certainly grabbed our attention. Designed to be a dream all-round trail bike, it draws inspiration from the brand's Rascal full suspension bike. As such, you'll find a 140mm travel fork up front teamed with progressive geometry, adaptable chainstay lengths and an amply short seat tube to accommodate the latest long travel dropper posts. Oh, and of course, it's constructed from glorious titanium tubing. The Terrade uses cold form 3-2.5 titanium tubing. Just in case you don't know, those numbers refer to the percentage of aluminium and vanadium material used in the tubes. So the tubes on the Revel are nearly 94.5% titanium, 3% aluminium and 2.5% vanadium, with traces of other materials such as carbon and iron. Revel says it used this grade of titanium tubes to achieve the stunning overall look of the bike while optimising stiffness and compliance. Other parts of the bike, like the head tube, bottom racket shell and dropouts, are machined from solid blocks of 6-4 titanium, which has a higher strength to weight ratio but is harder to form tubes from. Throw some more numbers around and back to the bike's geometry and the terrain is bang up to date. The head angle is 64.7 degrees across all sizes, while the seat angle steepens by half a degree per size from size small to XXL, starting at 74 degrees and topping out at 75 and a half. It's nice to see taller riders being catered for in this regard. There's also clean internal cable routing, SRAM's UDH derailleur hanger is attached to the end of those sliding dropouts, so you can choose cutting edge wireless tech or the simple single speed life. The Terrade is available as a frame only from $2,499, with bills starting at a not completely silly $5,199. It's not cheap either, but just look at it. Lovely. You can't have a list of top titanium bikes without including Linsky. Founded and operated by the Linsky family, the brand makes road, gravel, and most importantly for us in this video, mountain bikes. The live wire is very similar to our previous entry, the Revel Terrade, on paper. It uses the same grade 3 slash 2.5 titanium tubes and is based around a 130 to 140 mm fork. The geometry is a bit more traditional though, with a steeper 66.5 degree head angle and shorter frame reaches, with a large having a compact 458 mm number. You can however choose to have the frame with or without sliding dropouts like the Terrade though. Whereas the Revel is a devout 29er though, the Livewire can take either 29 inch wheels or the not often seen now 27.5 inch plus, with room for a massive 27.5.3 inch tyre fitting in the rear stays. You can't go too old school though, as you can't fit one of those weird front derailleur thingies, whatever they are. While Linsky built bikes in batches to cut costs, you can still add a degree of customization to the frame, with two different frame finishes and a number of graphic and head tube badge options at additional cost. It might not be the most cutting edge titanium hardtail around, but if you want renowned quality from a legendary brand with 40 years experience in making frames for this material, then you can't go wrong with a Linsky. Kingdom Bikes may not be a household name, but the brand has certainly produced some stunning bikes in the last 15 years since its formation in 2009. The Void is the brand's latest full suspension bike and sits alongside the long-standing Vendetta hardtail. Designed with input from suspension tuning and servicing gurus TF Tuned in the UK, the Void is a stunningly simple frame with a single pivot suspension design. It might be simple, but the platform is very adaptable, with the Void being sold with 130 or 160 mm of travel in full 27.5, 29 or mullet wheel setups. Where the Void really gets nerdy is the use of additive manufacturing. As I've already touched on, titanium can be hard to work with, so Kingdom has made many of the stress-laden moving parts of the frame out of additive manufactured titanium that you just couldn't do in traditional ways. Making titanium frames isn't the most environmentally friendly way to produce a bike frame, so minimizing waste helps in this regard. It also gives the bike a super cool futuristic look. It's definitely a looker in my eyes, no doubt helped by the super low slung top tube and continuous line from the top tube through the seat stays. Kingdom wanted the Void to be a fun, playful bike, almost like an overgrown full suspension dirt jump bike. The geometry is not the most radical out there, but it is certainly modern. Reach is 484mm on a size large with 29 inch wheels, and while the head angle is not radically slack at 65 degrees for the 130 and 64.5 degrees for the 160. 
nor is the seat tube particularly steep at 76 degrees. The chainstays are pretty lengthy though at 452mm, so we're keen to see how this bike handles on the trail. Again, all that titanium and additive manufacturing doesn't come cheap. The void frame set with a RockShox Super Deluxe rear shock starts from £3,850. Ouch! But worth it for the price of such a stunning frame? Let me know in the comments. While titanium frames are often mass produced, you'll also find small scale builders who can build something a little different to the norm. Olsen bikes are one such brand, and the Swan is most definitely different. For a start, the Swan doesn't use a traditional derailleur drivetrain. Instead, you'll find Pinion's range of gearboxes housed under the belly of the frame. The idea is that weight will be more evenly distributed and centered on the bike, the bike's center of gravity will be lower, and it should require minimal maintenance. You also get the benefit of no derailleur precariously hanging from the frame, waiting to break off if you crash in a certain way. This makes it great for riders who want a low maintenance, reliable bike, which often goes hand in hand with hardtail ownership. The downsides are the gearboxes are heavier and have more drag through the drivetrain, so they're arguably better suited to riders who are less about speed and more about fun. The Swan can be purchased with a range of pinion gearboxes, from the 9-speed 9XR through to the 18-speed P1.8e. Or you can specify the new C1.12i 12-speed system with the brand SmartShift electronic shifting. If you want to get your hands on one of these, then you need to know about the ordering process because it's a little different as these aren't just off-the-shelf frames. They're made to order right here in the UK. You place a deposit for the bike before working with brand founder Stephen Olsen to settle on your geometry based on their standard figures or fully customised. But the basis is a trail bike through and through, with a low slung top tube for plenty of standover clearance and room for big rubber, either 275 by 3 inches or massive 29 by 2.8 inch rubber. Prices kick off from £2,800 for a Pinion C1.12 frame set, with the complete bike starting from around £4,000. Last but by no means least is another titanium full suspension steed. And this is one I'm super excited about, and if I had the cash to splash on a dream trail bike, I'd definitely be looking at the 44 bike Snake Driver. After nearly five years of development, the V4 version of the Snake Driver is nearly ready for production. For now, there's no pricing, but Christopher, the man behind the brand, thinks it'll be on sale in time for spring 2025. But why does this bike get me all hot and bothered? Well, for one, just look at it. In my eyes, it's just plain gorgeous, and unlike the other bikes here, you will be able to choose whether the front end of the bike is titanium or steel. The Snake Driver features 140mm of travel up front and 120mm out back, with the linkage driven single pivot flex stay design. Parts of the frame, like the main pivot yoke, seat stay ends, and dropouts use additive manufacturing, which give a clean, sophisticated look. The geometry is pretty much bang on my preferred numbers as well, with a 65 degree head angle and 480mm reach in a size large. Christopher says you can build the bike with a lighter build featuring a Fox 34 fork and Floatex rear shock, or you can go beefier with a 36 and Float X2. I'd love to swing a leg over the Snake Driver and I'll be following the bike's progress on Instagram with interest. So there you have it, 5 Titanium Wonder Bikes I think are worthy of your attention. No, of course they're not cheap, good value or even the best in terms of performance, but this list is about so much more than the raw numbers. These bikes have a certain pull to them, just like a supercar, so love them or hate them, for many, Titanium will always have a special lore to them. But what do you think? Would you buy a Titanium bike? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you want to check bikes made from another lesser C material, then check out this video.